thank you for liking and commenting on this story. I love to read what you have to say. If you haven't already, please push the subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss out on a story. Above all, please share these stories with your friends so you can help the Black Dog Chronicles to continue. The Frogwood Roundabout by Roy Harrison Read for you by Hugh Carr It was the summer of 1914 when the travelling fair came to Frogwood. It came suddenly. It came overnight. No sight, nor sound, nor rumour. But one morning it was there, on Frogwood Common. Big and bright and brash and shiny, glittering with paint and polish, and raucous with the cries of barkers and Italians selling ice cream, and cockneys selling eels, and gypsies selling fortunes. Your destiny is in the stars, the Lady Zetta sees all. And in the middle of the common, on the edge of the ice cream stalls, and the lemonade stalls, and the shooting galleries, and the barrel organs, and the gypsy tents, was the giant roundabout, blazing red with its plunging horses. White, cream-colored, black and cream, black and white, red mouths and white manes, and all the while, as the roundabout turned and the horses plunged up and down, the steam organ brayed out music. And everybody was there, even the soldiers from the camp three miles away, pale, mustached and cocky in their khaki uniforms. The little boys gaped at them admiringly. The girls and younger women eyed them either with a different kind of admiration, or with a half-suppressed foreboding shiver. Jack and Alicia and Georgie sidled and pushed and squeezed their way through the crowds, deafened by the music, shoved every way they turned, hot and excited, desperately wanting to buy everything on the stalls, win every coconut of the coconut shy, ride on that huge and hurtling roundabout and never, ever have to go home. Alicia jumped and spun round as a voice bellowed in her ear. Come on now, ladies and gents. Come on now. Come on, little lady. You're jumpy as a kitten. Don't be shy. This with an impudent wink at Alicia, who went red. She heard Georgie giggle behind her. I'm not going to eat you, little lady. I wouldn't dream of eating such a pretty little lady as you. The man smashed his big brawny hands together. Ladies and gents, you won't see the like of this again. Not in your lifetimes, you won't. We don't stay, we're on our way from dawn to dusk to break of day. We ride faster than time itself. We ride forever. That's right, ladies and gents, he went on as someone guffawed. A ride on our roundabout is the ride of a lifetime. A ride to last you till Judgment Day. The world is changing. The world is in a hurry. So come on, come on. Like the bad penny and the bad cloth, we're not here today and gone tomorrow. We're here today and gone tonight. Tomorrow we'll be in London. Next week in Paris. The week after that, Berlin. Ladies and gents, you won't see the like again. You won't see! Jack pulled Elise's arm as the man went on, shouting his incantation. Come on, Alicia, for heaven's sake! Those London fellows just want to take every penny you've got. Did you ever hear such stuff as that chap spouting? Let's get some lemonade. I'm so dry I could drink a bucket full. But we want to go on the roundabout! We want to go on the roundabout! Georgie wailed anxiously, hanging on to Alicia's other arm as the three of them pushed and stumbled and pushed again through the noisy village crowd. 
Oh, stop pulling, Jack. You'll tear my dress. Alicia said. I don't think we can afford to go on the roundabout, Georgie. You know Mother only gave us so much. Georgie started whimpering. I want to go on the roundabout. You said we could go on the roundabout. We'll go and ask the man how much it costs, said Jack, who prided himself on being practical. Then we'll know, but I'm having some lemonade first. So Jack had two glasses of lemonade, and Alicia had to buy Georgie an ice cream coronet almost half as big as himself. And Jack and Alicia went on the coconut shy and lost, and tried the shooting gallery and lost. And then Jack said, Let's have some brandy snaps. But they had no more money. And for a while they wandered disconsolately around, and the barkers were shouting, and the barrel organs were playing, and Mrs. Corbett, who owned the Frogwood grocery shop, was sitting huge and happy in a cheap flowered dress, gobbling jellied eels and shaking with laughter at something Bert Daniels, the Frogwood barber, was telling her. Jack paused to stare half-enviously at some soldiers jostling, cursing and laughing around the fortune teller's tent. And on the roundabout, the Frogwood children were whooping and yelling as they hurtled round and round on the plunging painted horses. And the steam organ brayed out, Goodbye, Dolly Gray, and any old iron. It wasn't much fun just watching, and it wasn't much fun just to go home. But the man working the roundabout seemed to be the same man who had teased Alicia before. At any rate, he shouted as the roundabout shuddered to a halt and the children piled off and others got on. Come on, little lady. Come on, young gents. Faster than time itself. The ride of a lifetime. We ride forever and we never stop. <laughs> no more money. But wouldn't you like to ride if you could, eh? <laughs> and he laughed in a way that was somehow very unpleasant. Alicia looked up at the horses, now motionless on their bows. They were all different colours. They all had bright red mouths and big, brutal teeth and solid, brutal hooves, and they seemed to be grinning, row after row of them. She knew they were only made of wood, but she was suddenly afraid of them. They looked as if they could come alive any minute, biting, bucking, trampling, brawling. No money, young gents, little lady. I'll make you an offer. And when I make an offer, I keep it. Come out here at nine o'clock. At nine o'clock, mind you. And you can ride the roundabout for nothing. Free, gratis, and for nothing. But we have to be in bed by then, said Jack, hesitantly. And besides, it's very kind of you. Free, gratis. And for nothing, the man said, as if he hadn't heard. How you get here is your problem, young master. Far be it from me to put ideas into young persons' heads. Faster than time itself we ride. We never stop. Free, gratis, and for nothing. By tomorrow we won't be here, and we'll never be back. Free! The music started braying out again, and the roundabout began to turn, and his words were lost, and the three children looked at each other. A free ride? said Alicia. But it'll be dark, and father would never... The roundabout was hurtling round, and the horses were rising and plunging and tramping faster and faster, and the music was brawling, and all the children of Frogwood were yelling, and the horses plunged and grinned, plunged and grinned, that it would soon be dark, and it would soon be tomorrow. Jack thought it strange that none of these other children, most of whom they knew, 
had taken the least bit of notice of what the man had said. Not even Philip Myers, who was forever cadging sweets. Not even that awful Maisie Simmons, who was always yelling like a boy and had holes in her knickers. None of them. They behaved as if they just hadn't heard. Clouds scudded over the swaying trees which surrounded Frogwood Common. People were drifting away. Only the soldiers remained. It was getting late. It was getting colder. Georgie sucked the last few flakes and blobs of his ice cream coronet. Back home, their father was reading the paper and talking cryptically about soldiers and fatal decisions. And people who threw bombs at people in Austria, a country which apparently didn't have a sea coast but was full of forests. Jack fell into a daydream full of learning, hardly noticing the supper mother put before them. It would be school tomorrow. And after the children went to bed, they stayed awake in their room, ready to put on shoes and coats when it was late enough. And a brief rain fell like a rushing of leaves, and it grew darker outside the window. And on the common, skies and clouds and trees merged into a whispering blue-gray wetness. Out there, the roundabout waited. The grinning, painted horses waited. Jack, Alicia, and Georgie dressed and slipped out of the house very, very carefully, very cautiously, soundlessly latching the door, scurrying round the side of the house and up onto the common. And there was the roundabout, and there was the man waiting in the damp grass. Come on, little lady. Come on, young gents. The ride of a lifetime. The ride that lasts forever and all for free <laughs> georgie began to cry i don't want to go on a ride forever <laughs> not forever <laughs> hush georgie you're just tired the man's only teasing you said alicia soothingly and jack said it's really very good of you up we go then said the man a sudden harsh note of indifference in his voice, and jumped on to the roundabout. The children got on and climbed upon their horses, Alicia trying to overcome that needle-sharp tingle of fear at the sight of her horse's white, grinning, powerful teeth and blood-red mouth. Ready? cried the man, and the roundabout started to turn. No lights no music, just the roundabout turning slowly at first on the shadowy common, very slowly, then faster, then faster and faster, and the man was chanting in his barker's voice, chanting horrible words that didn't seem to make sense. Everybody's getting on. Everybody's getting on. Here today, gone tomorrow. More next week, gone the week after. Time is spinning past. Every second, every day, every year. The times are in a hurry. The world is moving faster. Georgie burst out crying. I want to go home. I, I want to go home. But the roundabout was now hurtling round so fast that the common could not be seen. Frogwood could not be seen. It was all that the children could do to hold on to their horses. And the terrible voice went on, higher and louder, resounding all around them, more like the voice of a machine now than the voice of a man. Ladies and gents, you won't see the like again. Times come, 
Times go, but we go faster and faster. And the horses screamed and plunged, reared and plunged, and Alicia clung, screaming. Jack's face was a white, spinning blur, clenched and sobbing. The terrifying mechanical voice brayed, echoing as if in laughter. You can't get off now! You can't get off now! And the roundabout spun and spun faster than time itself. Blood rained from the skies. Dying men bled to death in the mud. Guns boomed like thunder. Factory chimneys benched. Men lay shot dead in the streets. Dynamos pounded. Bombs exploded in city blocks, reducing them to rubble. Revolvers barked. Mobs tore women to death. The roundabout hurtled at dizzying speed. There was nothing outside anymore. Only the plunging, laughing, screaming horses. Only Mother was there. For an instant. Terribly apart, sobbing and wailing. Where are my children? Where are my children? Death screeched and gestured on a square in Nuremberg. The chimneys of Dachau and Buchenwald were transfigured with light and fire, and the souls of millions blew out like snowflakes falling back into space. Cars whizzed along the roads. Mrs. Corbett's grocery shop was replaced by a supermarket. Frogwood became a suburb. A mushroom cloud blossomed white in the sky to the shivering cry of a gong and high tinkling strings like children's voices. Every home should have one, voices said with a sneer. You can't afford to be without one. Plunging, biting, kicking, their jaws wide with laughter, the horses roared on, and outside the roundabout the night was a black whirlwind. The blood roared in Alicia's ears, and she saw they were not alone on the roundabout, for on every horse were scores of children, children with arms and legs like sticks, Bodies with tightly wrapped ribs, huge heads and blank, staring, terrified eyes. Korea wept, India stared, Egypt moaned, and Africa screamed in a dream of blood. And somewhere in the night, a voice sobbed on and on. Mommy! <laughs> I want to go! Mommy! Mommy! I want to go! And the night never ended. And the frogwood roundabout flew faster and faster. Next time on the Black Dog Chronicles. Don't go searching for that ancient book in that dusty library, for there might be something else waiting for you to find it. The Tractate Midoth from the Master of Classic British Horror, M. R. James. Next time 
on the Black Dog Chronicles. And please, don't forget to look out for the shadows. <laughs>